It's early morning in the valley. The sun is barely up and I'm making my way to a quiet spot on the Cowichan River to meet up with Chef Jared Quetson Williams. Hello, Jared. Oh, hey, Steve. Jared has promised to prepare traditional Pequin salmon for me and the process starts with lighting a fire. So I'm intrigued by, by that little uh, chunk of wood there, Jared. <laughs> um, it's actually quite a, a magical little thing. Um, so when a tree dies, the tree will rot away yeah. and it will become just a, a tree stump. Right. And, oh, that's big fish. That's a big fish. <laughs> He's got somewhere to be. <laughs> He's got somewhere to be, is right. <laughs> and so uh, when all the water and uh, sap in the tree begins to uh, dry out, right at the center of the uh, uh, tree stump, it looks like a pole that will run all the way out of the like um, center of a uh, hollowed out um, tree stump. Right. And that is all um, a pitch wood. And it, it's, oh, it, it's okay. an incredible resource that you would never anticipate in an old um, a tree stump that there would be dead this. wood. Yeah, but natural, no. That, that, that natural sap and pitch is, is collected and concentrated. Yeah, exactly. And when you need to um, light um, a fire in the rain, it's a very useful ally. <laughs> well, that, that's working because I would have been playing around with a lot more kindling and the little tiny stuff trying to get it. And, and you got paper in right in there what, with some pretty thick <laughs> stuff right out of the gate. That's oh, yeah. real. No and problem. you can see the pitch burning. That's that real black soot. Yeah, exactly. It? Exactly. Wow. Apart from his fire lighting skills, Jared, who trained as a chef and worked at various restaurants, is passionate about rediscovering and preserving the traditional food harvesting and preparation methods that have successfully sustained the inhabitants of the West Coast for thousands of years. So usually I, I have to be um, as like um, quick as I can because he, everybody wants to have lunch, right? Everybody thinks that <laughs> lunch is when we should eat and they ask me to prepare these um, traditional meals all the time and they want to eat at exactly noon. Yeah. But not yeah. realizing that uh, a preparation um, like this can take anywhere between five to uh, like six hours. When they want lunch, you're here at like 6 a.m. to to make sure everything's ready and happy. And when they want um, a pit oven, they say, oh yeah, we're gonna have um, a pit oven like for lunch. Well, I'm here at oh, like 2 a.m. And, and of course pretty much pit, doing the same you're, thing. You're digging I have to get a big hole in the ground, I have to get everything hot. And I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, you know, but everybody wants lunch. When you're running in um, like a restaurant, you can uh, turn on the range, but here um, you're using wood. And we all know that there's, uh, a lot of um, varieties of trees. And so uh, there are two woods that were traditionally used uh, pretty much everywhere on the West Coast. And that was either um, um, the alder wood, yep. uh, which its um, traditional name is um, Kualatla Asp, or maple wood, which was uh, traditionally known as Matas um, Asp. But these um, two woods, were the ones used um, to cook because they created this uh, almost sugary, um, a sweet flavor. But when we're having it, we're not eating this um, like every day. So we may not even realize what wood they were using, but if you were to, uh, to prepare it with the wrong wood and to hand that uh, um, to one of the elders, they'd know and they'd they be like, ah, oh, Shah, what are you doing <laughs> cooking like that? I can taste it, you know. Even with Jared's fire lighting knowledge and skill, we still have to wait till the fire is ready to start cooking. Learning to prepare and serve food is an essential skill that everyone depends on. So I'm pleased that Camosun College's Culinary Arts Department has partnered with the Songhees First Nation in Esquimalt to create a new training program open to all Indigenous students across British Columbia. We're both chefs, we were in the industry for many years, yeah. and as a chef you're, you're always teaching. It's an applied industry, yeah. and now we're teaching them that in a bit more of a controlled environment. Right. And so they're, they're really using 
actual materials that they would find in the industry. They're, if, they're, if they're making a sauce in, in, in culinary or they're setting tables up in buffets, it's the real deal. Um, and that's the, actually one of the most exciting parts about here in Songhees. The students outside of the classroom, we actually bring them in day two, their second day. We have them in working with, uh, with others in, in Songhees here, serving all the elders. The training course lasts 12 months and is based at the beautiful new Songhees Wellness Centre. Well, and the really great thing here, what's happening today is that it's almost like they've got an art gallery to draw from for these buffet setups. And I'm just looking over and we've got masks and we've got carvings and we've got some, some beautiful pieces of art that they get to incorporate into their learning. They get to incorporate into their learning, but it's also their heritage. That's right. It's also, you know, many of them know the carvers, like we were talking about earlier in class, and like, oh, I know someone that carved that paddle, I know some. So it's really interesting, you know, they can actually use stuff from their community. Right. And that's fantastic. Um, my long-term goal is to become a, a professional cook one to work in a facility. I've worked in the hospital in Alert Bay for the last 10 years as a food service worker and I would just like to move further up the ladder. I have a passion for working in the kitchen, but that also gives me the tools for hospitality management and tourism. So those are fields I didn't expect to be a part of cooking. So far I've learned um, how to manage and do ordering and everything that you need to do in food. You know, in food prep to run a business or work in a facility. I plan to go home and share the, all the knowledge I've learned and hopefully um, expand the business that my daughter and I have. Of course, this centre is open to the public, isn't it? This is this is accessible to all. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Events can happen um, here. From They don't just have to be Indigenous events. Right. Now, a lot of the food will represent Indigenous, and so they do use a lot of that in the cooking here. But everybody's welcome um, to come, and there's lots of other uh, facilities here. Back at the riverbank, the fire is ready, and it's time to prepare the salmon. As you can see, there is no head and uh, the insides are all removed. Traditionally, we would be cutting this um, from the rear to butterfly it, but to leave the uh, stomach meat. So the elders usually like to, um, they like to hassle me, hey, why is it backwards? What's wrong with your fish? It's backwards. So I'm and gonna do it backwards. This is piece that I, you know, again, we hear a lot about nose to tail when it comes to meat meat food or meat yeah. cuisine. But fish is no different, is it? Because, you know, those, there's, all. there's all the parts of the fish that, that we now don't eat like the heads and the guts and the liver and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you which, don't eat. Which is good, <laughs> good food. Like, yeah, there's nothing well, wrong with it whatsoever, the, is it? The elders would only want the head. Yeah. <laughs> when, uh, when I'm actually working with elders, you know, like, you know, like they always ask me, what happened to the head on your fish? And I say, well, this is how I acquired the fish. Well, what'd they do with the head? And I say, I think they threw it in the garbage, Auntie. Oh, you're in trouble, huh? Yeah. You're in big trouble. <laughs> threw it in the garbage. So what I'm gonna do here, as opposed to uh, trying um, to open it up the other way, I'm gonna open it up here by removing uh, the ribs on the inside okay. and the spine. So, so just cutting along the center of the spine. Right down the center. Without ruining the rest of the animal. Yeah. So, got that one side done, cut through this side. So you just got to get through those ribs, don't you? Once you get through yeah, that, then you're golden. Good to go. Absolutely. But I've, uh, I've had a lot of elders just, they're like, what are you doing? And they're watching. It's so <laughs> funny to them. So I'm you just saying, poked a hole in there, obviously, yeah. and then you're just going to weave the Weave the it kind of through. Now, I, sometimes I do it twice to make sure that I get it on the right side because I don't always remember which goes in and out first, but I think this is the right way. Oh, okay, I see what yeah, you got. I like to add holes. You don't always have to add your own holes. These are usually pretty yep. uh, So these are, and these, are, these are, this is that iron wood Iron wood, it's all about, iron wood, so. yeah, exactly. So if, if. So nice and hard, it's very, very rigid. Yeah, if yeah. you were to use any other wood, well, not any other wood, but the majority of other woods, um, when they heat up, they begin to droop. And right. so you'll lose your whole fish right in the fire. And so I got a little piece of uh, traditional wire over here. <laughs> so this is. Uh, you got to you got to work with every, with whatever works. With, don't with, you? Well, you know, like if you want to reuse it anyway. That's right. So this is um, um, a piece of ironwood. Yep. This uh, uh, this actual piece is what is called a, the pequin. Right. So the um, pequin refers to the the, to the this, steak. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Steak, yeah. 
Um, these um, little ones are actually called metaets um, asp, which actually means uh, to hold it open. Okay. Um, these are used in a lot of traditional um, food preparation. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm just going to move over here and slide this over, get it all the way down. So there's a few ways, obviously, I could have left the oh, tail okay. at I the top. I see where you're going with this, yeah. So, and and that, so you got a bit of wire there to stop the split from going any exactly, further. Exactly, exactly. And I'm just going to wrap this around here to keep it closed. But the elders, uh, they also like to tease me that this is um, uh, um, the Nanaimo way. Oh, you're from Nanaimo. So how do you know I'm from Nanaimo? Because you, because you know, like it's upside down. You know, this is, you know, this is on the bottom. You do it the other way when you're, I guess, when you're from here. I find that if I have it the other way, that uh, this becomes really, really overdone, and all this is reasonably raw still. Yeah. yeah. Use my uh, my traditional rock here. Trusty. A trusty, trusty um, traditional cinder block there. Cinder block there, of course, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, um, I've seen this preparation uh, used in quite a few ways. Um, a lot of uh, the new ways, they actually use um, like um, a wire um, m m m racks. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I'm a traditionalist. Yeah. Yeah. I like the wood over the rack. Chef Jared Williams is demonstrating a traditional cooking method, but it's also possible to blend traditional foods with other cuisines. Here we are in a very distinctive kitchen. I'm here with my longtime friend, Shirley Lang from Kitchens of Distinction. Shirley, thank you very much for having us in your- Oh, it's my pleasure. In your cooking space today. Thank you. So what are you gonna do with all these wonderful ingredients? Well, I am going to make you a traditional gumbo uh, Louisiana style uh, with a First Nations flair. Excellent. Since I'm uh, from Cree heritage, Métis okay. heritage, I, uh, you know, the history in Louisiana is yeah. uh, Native Americans uh, helped uh, people with food uh, yeah. back way back when, and uh, when the slaves were were there, they uh, introduced okra. Okay. Uh, so I just thought, well, I'm going to add some uh, elk to it today. Excellent. I'm just uh, making the roux. Okay. Yep. I started for first here with mm -hmm. uh, the all half a half a cup of olive oil, half a cup of butter, okay, and a and a cup of flour. This they call the Trinity, which is onion, celery, and peppers. Uh, so we let this cook for a little while, about ten minutes. Okay. Uh, and it'll get um, just until these are nice and soft. Okay. So I'm just adding some garlic. Okay. And then um, the spices. And the spices that I'm using are uh, cumin, thyme, oregano, paprika, cayenne. Okay. And it's a teaspoon of each, except the cumin, there's two. So what is, what is Kitchens of Distinction? What kind of, what, what do you do as, as part of your business? I'm an executive private chef. Okay. And so I take the worry, basically, out of uh, <laughs> cooking uh, and entertaining for people. Okay. Uh, and I do a lot of hors d'oeuvre parties, mm -hmm. uh, up to about 200 people even, right. but they're all hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. And that's where I get to play because I love different cultures. Mm -hmm. So I get to play with all the different uh, There's an opportunity foods. to be very creative. Very creative, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was okra that just okra. ran in there. Yeah, and then some chicken stock. Okay. Do you want to stir that for me, Sure, please? bring all that together. Make myself useful. <laughs> And then, my mom used to always add beans of any kind, but today yeah. I thought I'd add black, black eyed peas. Okay. okay. So andouille sausage. Okay, so a little more spice. Mm -hmm. Not beautiful. Now, can I sample it just a little yes, bit? Yes, you can. I love it. Now, I've already, with the elk, it's quite uh, tough. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and you have to take all the silver skin off. Yeah, so it's pre-cooked. Yeah, so I, I boiled it. Okay. Uh, for a couple of hours before you came yep. along. And here we go, this is what makes it the gumbo, isn't it? The best part, okay. prawns. How long will this cook for? And then we'll cook it for about an hour. Okay. Uh, just on low heat. Yep. So this, the, the, the sauce here, is, I don't even have to eat it, I can tell, it's, tell it tastes good, mm. just by the, 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 vis, the viscosity mm. of the texture of it. Oh, so that is so good. As you say, 
the bite comes through at the end. It's soft at the beginning, and then at the end, it's just, that's delicious. Shirley, thank you very much for having us in your kitchen today. My pleasure. It really has been an absolute pleasure. Back at the beach, the salmon has been cooking for about an hour with some regular turning and is looking ready. Um, firmness yeah. of the meat. Can I do a little yeah, absolutely. dive in there, Jared? And just... So yeah, the skin, as you say, the skin is nice and crispy. Nice and crispy on the edges, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and down. It's, it's nice but it's not hard. It's no. like it's not, it's, it's soft. It's, yes. That's a, beautiful. A little bit, absolutely. So what yeah. do you think? I think it's ready. Take it off of there. Take this part off and let's wander over to the table. That is a beautiful piece of fish. It's just soft. It's it's juicy. It is not by any stretch of the imagination dried out. <laughs> mm. That Jared is fantastic. Hey, this it just melts all the fish. Absolutely, it just melts in your mouth. And you know what? I love these little crispy bits oh, with the bits of skin. Those are the best. Absolutely. I'll eat the back of that. Get all piece. the flavor up there. Take that. Right off the back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I was intrigued by Jared's traditional way of butterflying salmon. So he's taking me to visit an expert, Daryl Modest, who also smokes salmon the traditional way in his backyard. That's a beautiful looking fish. A nice fresh sockeye. Okay. Frozen, fresh frozen. Yep. Well, what we've done is you'll just cut the head off. Turn it around and you got to wring the tail right to the bone. Okay, through that bone. I use another knife. Okay, a little bit of a small. And I cut a slit to the bone. Okay, a couple inches Bump up. that way. Yeah. Turn it around the other way. Now you can go down the backbone. Yep. Up and over, following the ribs. Following the rib cage. Look at that. Oh. Turn it around. Cut down the other side of the backbone. And then back along the ribs again. Down okay. the rib cage. Down to a certain point. So again, very and important you just, you're not cutting through. Yeah. And what you do is you just grab this part here and pull it on. And away you go. Wow, look at that. And there you've got so a now you got butterfly. A butterfly fish. In the old days, we used to use ferns like this. Okay. okay. Our job when as kids was to go and gather all these ferns because we didn't have paper towel. So I see what you're doing. Okay. You just wipe it clean. That was with the ferns. That's fantastic. And then of course that just goes back into the forest. So in the old days we used to get salt and just sprinkle it for liberally on the skin. Okay. So the salt is acting as that um, antimicrobial that's going to help dry the fish a little bit and dry it out. Help dry out the, the slime, right? Yeah. And so the inside, and then what would happen is they'd have a, a bin here, and you'd place them in there, and keep them overnight, right? They'd be yep, yep. overnight, and yep. then the next morning you would hang them up. And by that time, the salt should have worked its way through. Yep. So I'm going to insert these things. So these, you're just going to give them a little press, in. and this is, as you say, just to keep it butterfly. Just keep, keep it, it, yeah, keep it just open. to keep it butterfly. One there, and one in the middle. Put the stick through so that the flesh is up, yep. and then it'll hang. And you'll see how they all line, they'll, they'll all align in there. I'll just press it up here. Oh, okay, simple as that. It just sort of rests across the two. Yeah. Well, you, what you do is, if, when you obviously you got lots of fish, and you just line them up. Yeah. I can get about 20 on each each one of these things yeah. here. So, um, and you can see it's dripping already. Yeah. So that salt's doing its work <coughs> and drawing that moisture out. Mm-hmm. And 
the fire will be right in the middle of this. Right here. So how long will it how long will it take to smoke a, a batch of fish? It the uh, hard to, to to get it to a hard consistency where you can just eat it off the skin is yeah. seven days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And presumably that's a, a a relatively cold smoke. It's not you're not creating a no. A ton it's of a heat. cold smoke. Yeah. yeah. It just slowly smokes it and it'll dry up. And because we didn't have refrigeration, the smoked fish basically stayed right in here until you needed it. Oh, okay. So when you're done, you just take your fire. And I saw you moving a barrel, so the, the fire yeah. in a barrel. Yeah. And, and I noticed there is quite a lot of gaps in the wood. And, and again, so that's... Draft. You're, you're allowing that air to circulate. Yeah, that's right. The air, the smoke's going up and out. Yeah. That's fantastic. So how long has this, well, has this smoker been here, but how long have you been doing the smoking for the community? Well, when I was a kid, so that would have been 50 years ago when I started with my grandmother. And then um, basically it's your grandparents that teach you how to do these things, right? right. So um, I was fortunate to have, have her. And she, her teachings were <clears throat> when you have too much, you give it away. You never ever hoard it. You, you know, you help the community. Because one day they're going to be here to help you, right? While Daryl showed me his smokehouse, Jared put together some samples. So this is the end result That's of it. everything we've just talked about? Mm hmm That needs to be, you know, like I said, there's only four days smoked. Mm hmm So very, very soft. Mm hmm Nice and... It's absolutely wonderful. Daryl, top marks to you, sir, for oh, maintaining you. tradition first and foremost, but also creating delicious salmon. Oh. <laughs> For more great recipes, ask for the Flavors of the West Coast Cookbook in your local bookstore 